Hi mate, don't stab me please. And this guy, I haven't seen him before. <laughs> he looks a very well kept guy. A tall man in his 30s with a long melancholic face and a rickety back sits in front of you. He looks in the window languidly, gesticulates and cries something out soundlessly from time to time. As he sees you, he smiles shyly and nods. A good day to you. A simple passerby who can turn up to uh, be a rich investor. My name is Gubtsov, a poet and a writer. Are you here to talk about my dick? Uh, I assume seeing as it's capitalized, he's talking about Richard and not... <laughs> poet and writer Gubtsov stretches out his hand, then changes his mind, raises it to clap you on the shoulder, changes his mind again, and quickly hides it in his pocket. Wait, is this the person that the fortune teller told me about? Hmm... The, what was it, the writer who's writing dodgy, very dodgy novels. I wonder whether it's different. I should just give me some rubles. Here's some rubles, how about reading my future? I see an adulterer hidden in a city of red. He imagines filthy fairy tales. Will they ever see paper? You decide. Be quick, the time is nigh. So, Crass knows pneumonia. Crass being... Crass being red, I'm fairly sure. Imagine it's filthy fairy tales. So I have to help an author. I'm assuming that's at the bookstore when I can actually get there past the corrupt, monstrous, really idiotic gate guard. <laughs> Not really, but now I do want to. Let's talk about Dick. Oh, now my new friend will regret his decision to chat. The thing is, several painful, miserable months ago, a unique commercial idea occurred to me. Wow, and what is it? I will create a series of short stories united by the same arch story that will be coming out once a month. This means that people who will want to know what happens next will have to buy a new issue. This will make the work resonant, which will guarantee regular income. So I decided to... The writer's cheeks grow pink. So I decided to write a series of fantastic, erotic, humorous, educational stories about a member of the Communist Party in space, Dick Popov, and his spicy adventures at the space station Strawberry. Yep, I think we found our man. <laughs> Ah, oh, sadly I can't buy one. <laughs> wow, uh, you do have a vivid imagination. 30th century, Soviet humans reborn from the ashes of a nuclear apocalypse, explore space and meet other sentient beings. Young, strong and well-built central committee member Dick Popov flies the strawberry to represent the interests of the Soviet Earth. But how can a simple red-blooded guy keep the presence of mind like any worthy Soviet citizen should, when surrounded by exotic beauties such as blue-skinned Generalissima Leonarda Pildak from Ganymede, or Levitious Lizora from Venus? Wow, well, I'm surprised I got those names pretty well, I guess. <laughs> Let alone <laughs> menacing stripper robots from Uranus that appear once in a cycle to seduce all men of civilized races. Ha, <laughs> continue listening in silence. Gubstov smooths out his neat beard dreamily in size. And the strangest thing is, as soon as this idea occurred to me, the editor-in-chief of Shoot to Kill a Print House came to town for some business. His publishing house prints hundreds of materials from survival manuals to fiction. Alas, I failed to persuade him that publishing my stories was a good idea. But if you think my plan is worthy, maybe you could talk to him. He's staying not too far ahead from here in this hotel. His name is Vladislav Zhirenko. I'm a persuasive kind of guy now. Well, slightly persuasive. I need 90 persuasion to persuade a gate guard to knock off a couple of quid for my entry fee, but I can't do... Well, I, I guess this is going to be 100 or something? <laughs> How exactly did you try to persuade him? Well, he was having lunch here in the courtyard. I ran up to him and said... Right to give stuff, clears his throat, and for the upteat time goes red. Comrade Zarenko, oink a minute of your time. I'm going to make you a pig offer that bores great significance. Just let me persuade you. <laughs> what the fuck? Um, yes, something along those lines. Anyway, it didn't work. Is he the guy with the pig in his house? Because if... Or is that someone else? What's the little pig meth for? How's that supposed to persuade him? Well, someone show, told me I should include in my speech something original, to stand out. And there's a rumor someone keeps a pig in the Chamber of Commerce's bunker, so I thought it'd be a good reference. Yeah. Now, I do think I miscalculated a little. Maybe you'll be a little more persuasive. Yeah, to put it mildly. Okay, I'll sort it out for you. volume mixer.
Okay, so what the hell's a soldier doing in here? Hmm. A finely tuned, strong man mumbles something under his nose. When you first notice him, he pours some white powder from a tiny paper bag onto the ground and notices you watching him only after that. The hell? Oi! Hey, city militia! You need anything? Uh, what are you pouring around here, comrade militiaman? Militiaman <laughs> slaps himself in the face. Damn! Quite the eye you've got. You'll blab to everyone now, right? Uh, I didn't even understand what the thing was. <laughs> Nothing too scary. Just some holy salt from the local gy gypsy. But seeing how my hair keeps falling out without the ma with or without the magic, I threw it away. It's all because some old witch cursed me. She got into town not that long ago, started selling some weird shit too. I took her by the collar and dragged her out of the city. But as I was kicking her out, she whispered one word. Balding. Since that day, I started losing my hair. But fuck it. I already accepted my inevitable baldness anyway. Well, you've got an amazing beard to make up for it, dude. <laughs> Don't worry. Me carnal. A bald head is a sign of a macho man. A real manly man. <laughs> you won't be saying that when you feel I'm not saying you're wrong, brother, but I grew to like my hair, so to speak. I can't say I envy you. Other question? Go on. Well, at least you have a hat to cover it up as well. Why are you so nervous, Trooper? Did something bad happen? How can I not be nervous? If I catch a thief, he's likely to cut me up. If I chase an old crone away, she curses me. Is there a way to work without getting hurt around here? Is suffering all there is to life? Uh, tell me what goes on around town, you know? All sorts of rooms and gossip. Before I joined the protectors for Krasnos pneumonia, I was trying out the role of a guard in Paragon. It didn't go too well, but in the three weeks I was there, I managed to save a local scribe from a beetle. Yeah, that's right, an average old beetle. The guy had a phobia of all sorts of critters. When he saw a bug crawling around, he became pale, started choking, so I smashed a little thing. <laughs> and for my help, the bug fearing guy told me a theory. Kinda crazy, but still believable. Think about it. Who really won the war? We got the limit obliterated. America and our allies are mostly dust as well. Not even North Korea would have the bollocks to claim victory. This terrible war favored only by the dolphins. Stay silent. Tell me, are there fleets nowadays? Nope. Are there fishermen? Probably, but the boats are few and much harder to repair than before. Thus, the sea lies untouched and pure, just like in ancient times before humans. These floating weirdos, the dolphins, have shown surprising levels of intellect to our scientists just before the war. And now they are left alone. Left alone to build a terrible, ugly, underwater utopia. Cities underwater. Power plants underwater. Who knows, maybe even circuses where captive humans are made to perform for their creepy fish-like overlords. Hey, dolphins and mammals. <laughs> they might still be creepy overlords. What an idea. Um, <laughs> I want to tell on the gatekeeper, man! <laughs> he starts money for the people. That's a strong accusation. We won't check whether it's true, though. <laughs> God damn it. Well, think what you can do with this information yourself. Another question. Look at the time. I gotta go. Yeah. No one cares what I have to say. I'm here to expose corruption. But it's a waste of time. That wasn't him. Where is the guy staying in the hotel? It wasn't him, was it? No. That's... The insane stabby dude. He's good with a knife. It's not you. You're the veteran. Because it doesn't look like he can go up the stairs. So he must be in one of these rooms. But. Wait, can I actually watch this TV? Oh no, can I turn it on or off? Coming to you live, it's Wasteland 24. News, analysis, and entertainment. <laughs> kind of mad that they have got that running, actually. Let's see if I can't find him. Unless that's the local inn? I haven't really had time to check it. He said he was staying in this hotel when he mentioned that place, so... It's pretty weird. Let me go in here. Sleeping dude. Who's this guy? See a scrawny, sick looking man in a sleeveless top and homespun canvas pants. He, he would be a head taller if he straightened his back, but you can't help but thinking about just how fragile and weak he looks. It's probably due to the black circles under his eyes, unnaturally yellow skin, or constant shaking hands. 
The man ignores you as he tries to open a small bottle of cloudy moonshine. Still, no matter how hard he pulls, the cork that sticks from his neck, it just won't give in. His forehead is already covered with sweat, his cheeks grow pink with exhaust with exertion. He raises a conscientious look at you as if Darren desiring to ask for help yet feeling desperately ashamed to do so. Hmm. <laughs> Some of these are harsh. What the pussy? <laughs> I see you're busy, I <laughs> should come back later. Wow. Well these are hard. Mate, you'll dislodge your arm, let me. With a defeated side, the man gives you the bottle. Without much effort, you pull the cork and it springs out with a wet thump. Thank you. I'm glad to see there are people in these lands who can help the weak. With people like you, this city has a chance for survival. Well, if there's ever a cork pulling crisis, you know where to find me. Probably dead in the wasteland, to be fair, but still. Survival from what? The man grins for the second look. Uh, for a second look, and his bloodshot, yellowish eyes seem absolutely insane and wild. What? You're interested? You risk becoming the first person who's ever listened to the whole story. Oh, how could I pass this up? Why is that? Is it a long story? The guards kicked me out, but didn't let me finish. Mercenaries promised to knock the hell out of me. City residents laughed at me, but I heard it with my own ears. And what was it you heard? Death is drawing near to Krasnos pneumonia. The organized criminal group, Death. Nothing will stop it. Wait, is this the veteran? This is the other veteran? Death, my words. Find the one who created it. Um, how did you do that? Long ago, when this body was still loyal to me, in a faraway land, several months of walking away from here, I was... Oh yeah, in a faraway land, several months of walking away from here, I was known as Roma Death. A merciless, heartless gangster and murderer. A product of my time and surroundings. I knew no mercy as I spared no one. Old people, women, children. I took all I wanted and set fire to the rest. Strange as it might sound though, I wasn't totally mental. What's more, I tried to justify my doings with philosophy. What philosophy? I deduced that only the strongest had a chance to survive in this dire world. Oh yeah. <laughs> Funny looking at it now, right? The only purpose of the weak is to provide the strong with everything they need, and then become the dirt under their boots. I put strength higher than social and personal morals, higher than the law. I forfeited them all for one single idea. Everything I desire will become mine. Poor man's Nietzscheanism. <laughs> the old man nods gloomily. As time passed, people started following me, attracted by my views, inebriated by the cruelty I could teach them. Homeless guys, often very young, famished among the ruins. Those I spared out of vanity, unlike the rest who were unlucky to meet me. Together we were known as the organized crime group, Death. And then? I lost interest in my own ideas when I saw them through a stranger's eyes. I realized the boys and girls two times younger than me, children I had raised and taught myself, were ravaging, murdering, torturing innocent people, burning down houses and entire villages, screaming out slogans I made up myself. The weak should fear the strong. The strong is always right. I realized I was instilling this in my own head to stop feeling dismal about what I was doing, and so I fled, accompanied by one of my apprentices who came to the same conclusion. Interesting revelation. I'm amazed you're able to realize this. And then? The years I didn't live, I merely existed. A nameless shadow who had no friends, no human contact. A monster who tried to quench his wild nature with booze. I guess deep inside I wanted to die. Probably that's why I developed this illness. Yeah, sounds like hard living. <laughs> but several days ago, I met a guy who fled with me and contacted me. But several days ago, the guy who fled with me contacted me from Paragon. Three of my princes, my children, decided to move here from the unwelcoming north in this part of the wasteland. And what does that mean? As far as I understand, there will be three squads headed by the most bloodthirsty of my old followers. Dima Death, who likes turning people into living torches. Lena Death. A beautiful, insane girl who heads a gang of sadists and ego to... Uh-oh. They found me. <laughs> For this wild pack of wolves and tendency to poke eyes. I remember them as kids. I... I created them. And now, if we allow them to combine their forces, they'll wreak havoc in these lands. And what are your plans now? People don't take me serious. They say that if such squads existed in our lands, people would know. They don't understand. There have been no reports about them because my children leave no witnesses. Seeing or hearing them is a death sentence, but they had to be stopped. Well, good luck with that. I'm going to move to greener pastures, I feel. <laughs> Convince them or destroy, it doesn't matter. I'm too old and decrepit, and you're the only person who's heard my story to the end. 
Tell me, could you help me? I don't know why, but I feel I could help you. You're angels, you're misguided creatures. If you answer to the prayer of devil incarnate... Wait. You angels, you're misguided creatures. If you answer to the prayer of the devil incarnate. So you think you can exterminate my children? That's a very weird sentence. Did I... Yeah, that's a very weird sentence. <laughs> hmm... <laughs> Your press have nothing to do with it. It's people of the wasteland I care about. No, not my press, of course. Once a monster, always a monster. And I don't deserve your mercy or forgiveness. But save the world from my children. And you will not only save hundreds of lives, but receive all my remaining savings as a reward. Uh, good. What now? Now you should go to Paragon. The guy, a now grown up man, with whom I fled from my own gang, is waiting at the entrance of the tent city. You recognize him by a round black mole above his upper lip. I'm sure I will have forgotten that by the time I get there. <laughs> tell him about my disease. Say you've come to replace me. If he doesn't believe you, tell him the moon hides behind a cloud. That's our old password. Each of us had our own answer. He'll give you the latest locations to the squads he's registered, more or less accurately. Stop them, whatever the cost. What a task. Anything else? I'm listening. Uh, are you sick? Funny, isn't it? At some point in my life, I wasn't just strong. I saw the people totally defined by their strength. Unstoppable, cruel, unscrupulous. I'm merely a shadow of my old self. This plague that I've so fairly developed in old age is incurable even before the war. First, they'll devour my muscles. I can barely hold the bottle already. Then my internal organs. Then eternal flame until the end of time. Hmm. It's sad. Anyway, I have another question. What'd you do? Where'd you work? I'm glad the local authorities didn't ask me that question. It was enough to show them a bunch of bills covered in blood and stretch my hand to accept the occupancy permit. You can say I live off my savings. Hmm. Uh, what do you think about Krasnos Demonie? My old self, but not stifled by vodka, calls to the cheap city. Sometimes my new self even nods in agreement. Com oh, did it mean sheep? Complacent sheep that graze under the knife. That sounded quite gloomy. <laughs> Can I ask another question? Have you heard any interesting rumours? That circulate here? Well, have you seen the postman? I rarely leave my house. Last time I met him at the video theatre. He tried to tell me some crazy shit. I should have listened, but I went my way. Huh. Why does everyone know insane stuff and then hand me quests? <laughs> um, mine, a couple of questions about the leaders of the criminal group. Death? The man tenses up and grasps tightly at the race that's tucked behind his belt. Wait, what? I'm interested in its leaders. Who exactly? Demon Death. Demon Death, or the Red Death as they used to call him. His greatest passion was open fire. He was the epitome of his passion, always looking for a fight, always proving his dominance, winning, humiliating, destroying, feeding the remains of the fire. If only the burning coals that mark his way could talk, what blood-curdling stories they would tell. Something about Lena death. Little Lena, as beautiful as she is cruel. I saw wanted posters where she's called White Death, fair headed monster, or Beauty and the Beast in the Seducing Body. Since her father died, and I, who was like her father to her, quit the gang, she's been overflown with melancholy. The right to the strongest is still her main ideal, but she's turned it inside out. She believes in murder to be a virtue. The world is for the strong, so the strong should show their mercy to the weak and stop their suffering. Well, I guess it's not going to be ridiculously hard to convince her because she just at least seems to be trying to possibly do the right thing in a fucked up kind of way. Now tell me about myself, Ego Death. Ego Death, the Raven, the Black Death. In other times he did become a theatre star, but thanks to me he's turned his life into a bloody one-man act. If he's in a good mood, his demeanour, weird gestures and pathos might give you the wrong impression he's harmless. But when a flamboyant actor leaves, a terrifying tyrant rises its ugly head. A slaughterer who massacred entire villages, laughed as he was poking old men and kids' eyes before releasing his wolves at them. Well, that's nice. Let's go back a little. Have you heard about Kosha the Yob? Oh yeah, that's the other guy, isn't it? Yes, I've heard his name. I'm not sure we've met, but judging by what he did, he resembles my old self very much. The difference between us is, I spend every single day of my life haunted by the people I've murdered, and Kosha, people say he doesn't care. No regrets. Still, these are merely rumours. I don't know much about him. People say he's left his criminal past behind now and tries to pass off as an ordinary person. But that's all I know. 
Well, I gotta try and find them. More quests. Right, I'm still looking for that publisher there. Hello? You don't look like a publisher. The old woman walks... Oh, the old woman walks behind you across the dirty kitchen of the communal apartment. She wraps a long shawl around her to keep away the chill and follows you with her keen, unkind eyes. Without taking the end of the shawl from her wrinkled up face, she addresses you in a screechy voice. What are you doing loafing about like that? Looking for something to nick? Uh, get off me, you old crone. Hello, what are you talking about? I just wanted to have a look at the house. Yeah, sure. I'm not buying it. A swindler, are you? But there's nothing here for you to steal. There's no one but us old folk in the house. Is this a local nurse and home? Watch your mouth, hooligan. The old fragile woman looks at you angrily. You clearly shouldn't make her even angrier by asking unnecessary questions. <laughs> I'm gonna get in combat. Oh my god, look at the way she's just turned her face around to look at me. Poor Eagle. But he's horrified. Tell me about your neighbours, Gran. Old and decrepit gangsters, sick drunkards, that's my ill luck. I just run around looking after them. Roman is fine, he's a quiet, placid man. A bit uncanny, perhaps, but Vice Stotsky, the navigator. Old drunk, the fact that he went through the war doesn't help. Sleeps all day long, there's no waking him. And at night he rubs elbows with the rabble at the local dive. Humiliates himself to get money. Yep, yeah, I think I've got that one. <laughs> Anything interesting going on in town? I don't know and I don't want to know. It's none of my business. Only thieves and gangsters are interested in such things. But what about noble adventurers? Is there anything going on in the world? This village, our Tradner, is haunted by all kinds of problems. Now it's a drought. Next time gangsters take all their money and atom men pass through their village, they only live a couple of hours away at the city and behave like savages. Okay, I'm leaving then. Goodbye. Hmm. So, an old folks home. I'm a bit wary of going into doors ever since... I thought there was a magazine there. Ever since the, uh, you know, getting attacked inside houses when I try and talk to people. Nope, snores loudly. The tire. Ooh, piece of candy. Probably should take that stuff to sell, but I will. And what's in the next area? Ooh. The new area. What the hell? Oh, that's the guy with his pet mermaid. Hello there, traveller. A wide-shouldered, muscular, bald man of around 40 walks with a huge mermic by his side. As the man notices you, he smiles in a friendly manner. What? You like the mermic? Come closer, don't fret. This little guy is very polite. You're polite, uh, Bootsy? The man pokes the ant with the tip of his shoe. The insect clicks his jaws and nods a tiny little head. That's pretty cool, actually. I just want to ask you some questions, can I? Fine with me. You tell me what's your name? Sure thing. I'm Ev Evdokim Durov, a free entrepreneur. And here's my mermaid, Bootsy. He's very good natured and adores children. No one ever leaves their pet in this charismatic ant. What do you have? Any ant pheromones? Nope. Let's see, another question. How long have you stayed in the city? Ah, me and Bootsy, we sort of got stuck here. Initially, we planned to travel all over the land and entertain everyone, but life's just too damn calm around here, so we stayed. Yeah, it's a pretty calm city. What'd you do for a living? What are you, some kind of dummy? Here he is, my little booty, the giant ant. He's my job, and he earns me a living. Right, how silly of me. You're the dummy and your aunt is retarded, bye. Hush. Have you had anything interesting lately? I thought it was lucky that I had booty, but they say one dude whose name's Ashot Epicoposian has several mermaids, a giant boss and a horned smelton and an arachnidus. He transports them all around in giant balls that he loads onto his truck. I saw a mission to cause Ashad harm. The balls open up, and the mutated horrors inside stop mauling everyone around with the most terrifying attacks in Paris. Yeah, I'm definitely not getting Pokemon eyes from that. Sometimes life is... Maybe I should go also catch them all by now. Can I do anything else with them, actually? I don't think so, right? I decided to end our talk by... Okay, so what's with the giant ant? The man kneels before the mermic and starts rubbing his thorax. The mutated insect starts breathing loudly and sticking its tongue out like a happy, excited duck. Oh my god, is it just a mutant duck? A very, very mutated duck. What's the story? We were both alone in this world when we met, so we started travelling together, entertaining folks and giving kids amazing birthday parties. Well, as well as earning a pretty penny. Booty will let almost anyone pet him for five rubles. I take the money and buy us sugar cubes and beer. I don't know. If it was up to me, I would grant this El Atrocidad a quick death. 
God, stop being so harsh, Fidel. I'd love to pet Mermaid. And you would have to deal with it, Fidel. Calm down, Barkeep. You're just jealous. You'd probably die for an animal like this in your pub. Check it out. The man gets a beer bottle out of his backpack and sticks it between the huge rage of the sharp jaws of the Mermaid. Click his head and the Mermaid bites through both the metal cap and the glass of the bottle. Your new friend takes a drink out of the crushed mango bottle, winks and gives you a thumbs up. Why isn't your Mermaid attacking me? Your host scratches the ant's head and the thing starts vomiting green paste or was purring like a cat. What? Who told you all mermaids are evil? They're social animals. The Hive Queen teaches them to attack humans by using special pheromones. Booty never knew his queen, you see. His anthill was attacked by people from my village up north, but he was still an egg. Thus, no command to kill all humans was ever issued. <laughs> ah, that makes sense, actually. Booty is his name. Why? Upon hearing his name, the ant shrugs his antenna and starts looking around anxiously. His master just fails. When I got my hands on some ant eggs, I did not know the temperature they needed to hatch, so I placed them into different environments. I put Booty's eggs in an old wool trim boot, and he hatched. Unfortunately, his little brother, Sandily, Furnacy, Toiletty, <laughs> Fridgey, went as lucky. Bless her little souls. Ah, okay, that makes sense. Where did you get that beast, fam? The moment rolls over onto his back, so that mouse can pet his belly. When people from my home village raided the local anthill and started shooting all the ants and throwing molotovs all around, I stole some eggs from the royal egg chamber and took them home. Three weeks later, my eight-legged son was born. My little worker. My sweetie. I heard and saw enough for the day. So what things can you mermit do? I just told you, petting him costs five rubles. Isn't that enough for you? When I get enough for a camera, I'll also sell his pictures for people with some rubles. <laughs> Take my money. I want a pet. You hold your hand out for the mermic. And he carefully takes it his huge jaws. After that, he starts moving his head up and down, so shaking your hand in what might be the first gesture exchanged between man and mutated insect. Ah, oh, I want a Bootsy. But a Bootsy only costs five rubles, but it's so fun. You'll be happy doing it all day long. And maybe he also offers some other services? Hmm, I'm not sure where this is going. I told you he does not. Hmm, is it really so? The man picks up the giant ant and holds it protectively in his arms like a grotesque mouthful of baby. I told you there are no more services. Whatever you say. Maybe some other time. It's time to change the subject. Looks like we talked about everything. See ya. Hmm. Other services. Which guy? Wow. It's a city quite big. It does look quite big. Holy shit, this place is big. It's a big badge. Oh my god. Wow, this place is massive. I'm gonna miss so many things. <laughs> Understand. Let's go into the medical center then. The foot. Oh, no, oh, my character's trying to close the doors. <laughs> huh.